According to Bloomberg, at the world's most important climate summit, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, whose members supply almost 30% of the world's oil, has a pavilion for the first time. There, staff were giving out a children's book about oil. A gray-haired cartoon professor named Riggs takes young readers through topics as arcane as the lightness and sourness of crude, before explaining why oil is important. Without oil, we would not be able to continue to enjoy the same standard of living. The book proved so popular that the pavilion ran out of copies just four days into the two weeks of COP28. According to Bloomberg, China's consumer prices fell at the steepest pace in three years while producer costs dropped even further into negative territory, underscoring the challenges facing the economic recovery. The consumer price index fell 0.5% last month from a year earlier, the National Statistics Bureau said in a statement Saturday. That's the biggest drop since November 2020 and is weaker than the 0.2% drop projected by economists in a Bloomberg survey. According to Reuters, China's consumer prices extended their decline in November while factory gate deflation deepened, as persistent weakness in demand casts doubts over the sustainability of the economic recovery. The consumer price index dropped 0.5% in November both from a year earlier and compared with October, data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed on Saturday. In October, the CPI fell 0.2% year-on-year. According to Reuters, Tesla Inc. defended its use of autopilot and self-driving for its driver assistance features, arguing in response to a California regulatory action that the agency had implicitly approved the terms when it did not take action in its previous investigations of them. The electric car company run by billionaire Elon Musk was accused last year by California's Department of Motor Vehicles of falsely advertising its autopilot and full self-driving features as providing autonomous vehicle control. According to Reuters, New York-based stock exchange Nasdaq Inc. agreed to pay a $4 million settlement to the U.S. Department of Treasury over apparent violations of sanctions against Iran by a former Nasdaq unit, the department's Office of Foreign Assets Control said on Friday. Nasdaq OMX Armenia provided services to Iran and Iran's state-owned bank Melot, it said. According to Reuters, a rocket developed by Land Space Technology on Saturday launched three satellites into orbit, a milestone in the Chinese private rocket startup's mission to test whether its vehicle using methane and liquid oxygen is ready for commercial liftoffs. The success could boost investor confidence in methane as a potential rocket fuel, which is deemed able to help slash costs and support reusable rockets in a cleaner and more efficient way. According to Bloomberg, the European Union reached a hard-fought deal on what is poised to become the most comprehensive regulation of artificial intelligence in the Western world. Delegates from the European Commission, the European Parliament and 27 member countries agreed to a set of controls for generative artificial intelligence tools such as OpenAI Inc.'s chat GPT and Google's Bard, the kind capable of producing content on command, EU Internal Markets Chief Thierry Breton said Friday in a post on the social media site X. According to Reuters, OPEC members are pushing against attempts to include language on phasing out fossil fuels in a COP28 climate deal, underlining the struggle over whether the summit can for the first time in 30 years address the future of oil and gas. Negotiators and observers at the annual UN climate talks, pursuing a deal to tackle the worst impacts of climate change, said several OPEC members appeared to have heeded calls by the oil producer group to veto any deal to phase out fossil fuels. According to Reuters, there is an overall consensus that Azerbaijan should host the COP29 UN Climate Summit next year, the country's ecology minister Mukhtar Babayev said on Saturday. I'm delighted to announce that there is an overall consensus on the candidacy of Azerbaijan to host COP29, he told the COP28 summit in Dubai. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. labor market strengthened in November with pickups in employment and wages deflating hopes the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates early next year. The acceleration in payrolls is at odds with recent reports that have depicted a softer hiring pace, an outcome favored by the Fed as it will help rein in demand and tame price pressures. Officials are still expected to leave rates unchanged when they meet next week. According to Reuters, the dream of making it big in Canada is turning into a battle for survival for many immigrants due to the high cost of living and rental shortages, 
as rising emigration numbers hints to newcomers being forced to turn their back on a country that they chose to make their adopted home. Trudeau has made immigration his main weapon to blunt Canada's big challenge of an aging and slowing population, and it has also helped fuel economic growth. That drove Canada's population up at its fastest clip in more than six decades this year, Statistics Canada said. According to Reuters, some countries are resisting a pledge to phase out fossil fuels in a COP28 climate deal, jeopardizing attempts for UN climate talks to deliver a hard commitment for the first time in 30 years on ending the use of oil and gas. Observers in the negotiations said Saudi Arabia and Russia were insisting that COP28 focus only on reducing climate pollution, with no mention of the fossil fuels causing it. According to Reuters, Russia said on Saturday it was looking into whether its frozen gold reserves, taken after Russia invaded Ukraine, could be used to fund the Climate Damage Fund to help developing countries. In what looked like an attempt to try to fulfill Moscow's aim of doing everything possible to stop the West from seizing its frozen reserves, Russia's climate envoy said at the COP28 summit the move would help to close the gap between developed and developing countries in dealing with climate change. According to Reuters, European Union policymakers on Friday agreed a provisional deal on landmark rules governing the use of artificial intelligence, including governments' use of AI in biometric surveillance and how to regulate AI systems such as chat GPT. Here are some reaction to the news from key people and experts. According to Bloomberg, earlier this week, European negotiators sat in a conference room in Brussels and debated for nearly 24 straight hours dozing off at times and working a self-service coffee machine so hard that it broke. They came with a singular mission, reaching an agreement to regulate artificial intelligence. And they didn't quite get there. But the EU's internal market chief, Thierry Breton, didn't want a long break over the weekend that would give lobbyists more time to weigh in, according to people familiar with the matter. According to Bloomberg, COP28 Daily Reports, Sign up for the Green Daily Newsletter for comprehensive coverage of the climate summit right in your inbox. The U.S. opted out of a Dutch-led coalition that aims to phase out fossil fuel subsidies, starting by extricating countries from the international agreements in which they are embedded. According to Reuters, Ukraine on Saturday strongly condemned Russian plans to hold presidential elections next spring on occupied territory, declaring them null and void, and pledging to prosecute any observers sent to monitor them. Russia's upper house set the country's presidential election this week for next March, and chairwoman Valentina Matvienko said residents in four occupied Ukrainian regions would be able to vote for the first time. According to Reuters, a small group of demonstrators staged a very rare protest in Dubai on Saturday in the COP28 UN climate summit site to demand the release of pro-democracy activists imprisoned in the United Arab Emirates and Egypt. About 25 activists took part in the protest, holding up pictures of Emirati prisoners Ahmed Mansour and Mohammed al-Sadiq and Egyptian-British political activist Allah Abdel Fattah. According to Yahoo Finance, saving for a down payment on a home can take a long time, especially amid steep mortgage rates and high home prices. That's why some Americans are looking to family for help. According to Reuters, U.S. officials have begun informal talks to prepare for new negotiations on the North American Free Trade Agreement, David Cohen, the country's ambassador to Canada, told CBC News in an interview published Saturday. On the U.S. side, we are just beginning to have our internal discussions about what we might like to talk about with Mexico and Canada as the sunset approaches, Cohen told CBC News, adding that the process would be devoid of the existential drama that gripped the negotiations in 2017-2018. According to Reuters, eight of the world's top commodities traders have pledged to stop buying soy from farms that ruin South American grasslands, adding to previous commitments to shun growers that clear forests, a sector group said on Saturday on the sidelines of the COP28 climate summit. The move could bolster conservation for Brazil's Cerrado, the world's most biodiverse savanna, at least half of which has already been destroyed for agriculture. Farming, forestry and land use account for more than a fifth of planet warming emissions. According to Bloomberg, UK commodities broker, Marex Group, has chosen New York over London for its second attempt at a public listing, in another blow to the UK's ailing stock market. 
The New York Stock Exchange listing could see Marex valued at more than $1.8 billion, according to the Times, far higher than the £500 million to £700 million range it targeted when attempting to float in London two years ago. According to Reuters, China top climate diplomat on Saturday said a final agreement on fossil fuels at the United Nations COP28 summit was crucial but may not be perfect, while also declining to say whether the country could agree to eliminating fossil fuels entirely. Whether the world's nearly 200 countries can agree to eliminate fossil fuels, the main driver of climate change, has become the make-or-break issue on the negotiating table at COP28 in Dubai. According to Reuters, the teenage children of jailed Iranian Nobel Peace Prize winner Narjas Mohammadi fear they will never meet their mother again, but said they were proud of her struggle for women's rights as they prepared to accept the award on her behalf on Sunday. Mohammadi, 51, who is serving multiple sentences in Tehran's notorious Evin prison on charges including spreading propaganda, won the award on October 6 in a rebuke to Tehran's theocratic leaders, prompting the Islamic Republic's condemnation. According to Yahoo Finance, a crucial deadline is coming up for borrowers with commercially held federal loans and those who were in delinquent status before the pandemic payment pause. Borrowers with commercially held federal loans have until December 31 to consolidate their loans to qualify for the one-time payment adjustment, which can help them get closer to or achieve a discharge through their income-driven repayment plan. According to Reuters, European Union policymakers and lawmakers clinched a deal on Friday on the world's first comprehensive set of rules regulating the use of artificial intelligence in tools such as chat GPT and in biometric surveillance. They will thrash out details in the coming weeks that could alter the final legislation, which is expected to go into force early next year and apply in 2026. According to Yahoo Finance, payback is hell. In a turn of the tables, job seekers are increasingly ghosting employers. That's according to a new report by Indeed, the online job search platform. According to Bloomberg, investors are facing a pivotal week as a key measure of inflation that hits Tuesday and the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision on Wednesday are expected to set the tone for the stock market and economy heading into 2024. Growing speculation that the Fed has done hiking rates and will start cutting by mid-year is fueling a sharp drop in Treasury yields and rekindling investors' risk appetite. The SP500 index has added roughly $4 trillion in market value since late October, as traders rush into beaten-down areas of the market like small caps, which typically benefit from falling borrowing costs. According to Reuters, the European Union's climate chief on Saturday heavily criticized an attempt by OPEC to derail a COP28 deal on phasing out fossil fuels, calling the move by the oil producers club, unhelpful, and, out of whack. Nearly 200 countries meeting in Dubai for the UN's COP28 climate summit are debating whether to agree, for the first time, to eventually end the world's use of fossil fuels, the main cause of climate change. According to Reuters, the Biden administration has used an emergency authority to allow the sale of about 14,000 tank shells to Israel without congressional review, the Pentagon said on Saturday. According to Reuters, Manchester United were humiliated 3-0 at home by Bournemouth in the Premier League on Saturday as the pressure ratcheted up once again on manager Eric Ten Hag. The Dutchman looked forlorn as he watched on in the teeming Old Trafford rain as his shambolic side were comprehensively outplayed by Inform Bournemouth. According to Reuters, at least 17,700 Palestinians have been killed and 48,780 wounded in Israeli attacks in Gaza since October 7, Gaza's health ministry said on Saturday. Ashraf al Chidra, spokesman for the Hamas run ministry, said that in recent hours two paramedics were wounded when Israeli forces targeted an ambulance while it was working to evacuate wounded patients from Gaza's European hospital. According to Reuters, COP28 President Sultan al Jaber on Saturday told nations at the UN climate talks in Dubai to speed up their work to find a final deal, saying there were currently more areas of divergence than agreement. There is some positive movement at the political level, and we need to channel that energy into speeding up the technical work, Jaber told a plenary session. According to Yahoo Finance, holiday gift giving can be a major source of tension for couples, according to a new study, with men more likely to feel higher levels of pressure and have bigger expectations. Overall, 
Deciding on a budget, for gifts and going over budget, were the top holiday stressors on relationships, with 30% of respondents citing both factors in a recent bread financial survey of 2,000 U.S. consumers. Feeling pressured to spend too much and expecting bigger gifts could also drive rift between couples. According to Bloomberg, UBS Group AG has hired J.P. Morgan Chase Company veteran Tommy Ruger as global co-head of equity capital markets, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Ruger, who is based in New York, will join Gareth McCartney in the role, said the people, who requested anonymity discussing confidential information. Jeff Mortara, currently McCartney's global co-head of ECM, is set to pursue other opportunities either within UBS or externally, the people said. According to Reuters, Liverpool climbed to the top of the Premier League as Mo Salah scored his 200th goal for the club in a 2-1 win at Crystal Palace on Saturday but storm clouds returned to Manchester United as they lost 3-0 at home to Bournemouth. Bottom club Sheffield United beat visiting Brentford 1-0 for only their second victory of the season while fellow strugglers Burnley and Nottingham Forest both drew. According to Reuters, Manchester United have spent around £400 million on new signings since appointing Eric Ten Hag as manager in 2022 but after yet another abject display on Saturday the Dutchman said his squad was not good enough. Any optimism provided by a midweek win against Chelsea that had put sixth place United only three points behind champions Manchester City in the Premier League evaporated in a 3-0 home loss to Bournemouth. According to Bloomberg, a rally over the last week was powerful enough to erase some losses on a series of dollar bonds tied to the conglomerate of billionaire Gota Madani, debt that had dropped after a short seller accused firms owned by Adani of fraud. The jump came after the group, which strenuously denies the allegations, raised $1.4 billion for a renewables project and published an initial blueprint for refinancing a solar energy unit's $750 million dollar bond that matures in September. According to Bloomberg, from Washington to Frankfurt to London and beyond, central bankers are approaching their final decisions of the year against a backdrop of unease at how the global inflation cycle is turning. Policymakers from fully half of the group of 10 jurisdictions of most traded currencies are scheduled to meet in the coming days, and interest rates for 60% of the world economy will be set in a whirlwind 60-hour window. According to Reuters, Hong Kong holds its first, patriots-only, district elections on Sunday as a national security crackdown imposed by Beijing further marginalizes formerly popular opposition figures in the China-ruled city. The pro-China government has been seeking to boost turnout, as some observers see large numbers spurning the polls, in contrast to the last council elections in 2019, during Hong Kong's mass pro-democracy protests, which drew a record 71% turnout and a landslide victory for the Democratic camp. According to Bloomberg, Australia will raise fees for foreigners who buy existing houses, while encouraging them to invest in build-to-rent projects that will boost the nation's housing supply. Foreign investment fees for the purchase of established homes will triple, Treasurer Jim Chalmers said in a statement Sunday in Sydney. Penalties for foreign buyers who subsequently leave their properties vacant will double while application fees for investment in build-to-rent projects will be reduced, he said. According to Reuters, a U.S. delegation gave its support to Argentine president-elect Javier Malay over talks with the International Monetary Fund in developing its lithium sector during a meeting in Buenos Aires on Saturday, a White House official told Reuters. Juan González, advisor to U.S. President Joe Biden and the National Security Council's Western Hemisphere senior director, said the talks, a day ahead of Malay's inauguration, were very positive and focused on the country's embattled economy. According to Reuters, Australia will triple fees on purchases of existing homes by foreign buyers, Treasurer Jim Chalmers said on Sunday, as part of measures aimed at increasing the supply of affordable housing. Higher fees for the purchase of established homes, increased penalties for those that leave properties vacant, and strengthened compliance activity will help ensure foreign investment in residential property is in our national interest, Chalmers said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, supercharging crop seeds to better withstand drought, breeding cows that burp out less methane, and tracking cattle to prevent deforestation. They're part of the arsenal the world needs for food's climate fight, and they're getting a big cash boost. According to Bloomberg, 
Apple Inc. on Saturday said it shut down third-party applications that enabled Android devices to use the iMessage service to communicate with iPhone users. The iPhone maker said in a statement it took steps to protect our users by blocking techniques that exploit fake credentials in order to gain access to iMessage. It added that these techniques posed significant risks to user security and privacy, including the potential for metadata exposure and enabling unwanted messages, spam, and phishing attacks. According to Reuters, Israel ordered residents out of the center of Gaza's main southern city Khan Yunus and pounded the length of the enclave overnight, after the United States wielded its UN Security Council veto to shield its ally from a demand for a ceasefire. Since a truce with Hamas in the two-month-old war collapsed on December 1, Israel has expanded its ground assault into the southern half of the Gaza Strip, pushing into Khan Yunus, where residents reported fierce battles. Both sides reported a surge in fighting in the north. According to Reuters, China's securities regulator has published draft rules aimed at slashing trading commissions for mutual funds and addressing the conflict of interest between the securities trading and fund sales businesses of brokerages, the latest reform to the $3.8 trillion mutual fund industry. The China Securities Regulatory Commission said the proposals were designed to protect investors and better regulate the way fund managers allocate trading commissions.